I'm Simon Calder and 40 minutes ago I was in the shadow of the Shard at London Bridge. Now I'm deep in the Kent countryside. Even so close to the capital you can lose yourself in a green and pleasant land, explore some of the most intriguing stories of England's historical mosaic and eat, drink and stay in style. Kent is decorated with all kinds of castles, but Hever is the place to begin. This was the childhood home of Anne Boleyn, the doomed second wife of Henry VIII and mother of Queen Elizabeth. Hever Castle's origins are 13th century, but just before Anne was born, the Boleyn family expanded it in the latest Tudor style. Later, as the Victorian era came to a close, it was abandoned for a while until the American multi-millionaire William Waldorf Astor decided to make Hever his corner of the Garden of England. Astor created gorgeous gardens in which to place his collection of classical sculptures, adding a fresh dimension to a location at the heart of English history. Duncan Leslie, the chief executive, says the key episode in Hever Castle's seven centuries was Henry VIII's romantic interlude. We're most famous for Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn, and, and you know, clearly that's quite difficult to beat in terms of a you know, big buck story. So she wasn't going to be with Henry uh, in an intimate way unless he divorced his wife. So it was, you know, it was a big, big story, and, and Henry VIII changed his religion at the time, which was, you know, changed the religion of the whole country to make that happen, which is just astonishing. You can even spend the night here thanks to some luxury B&B accommodation. But right now I'm going east of Eden, crossing the River Eden, a tributary of the Medway, to a stately home with another Henry and Anne connection. For me, Penshurst Place is pretty close to perfection in honey-coloured stone. Queen Elizabeth, daughter of Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII, is known to have visited Penshurst Place. The current aristocratic residents are Viscount Delisle and his wife Lady Delisle, who told me what the visitor will see. Well, they see the state rooms, which have always been uh, the state rooms and the great hall, which you can see with the pitch roof there, um, is, is the most staggering room, which was the original part of the house. And then they go through through the solar, through the tapestry room and um, Queen Elizabeth room. Penshurst Place is also the location for some heavenly horticulture, starting here in the Italian walled garden. I'm heading now for a new continent. Perhaps you'll join me. In the 1840s, the Reverend Barham wrote that the world, according to her best geographers, is divided into Europe, Asia, Africa, America and Romney Marsh. This southern extreme of Kent is a land that shouldn't really exist. The bare fields were reclaimed over centuries from the sea, creating a cul-de-sac for the nation. Paul Hadaway is from the Kent Wildlife Trust. Romney Marsh is just one of those iconic landscapes that we have in the southeast. Um, this is a true frontier, and when you look across the vista behind me, you can just see the rolling um, fields that go for, for miles away towards the, what was once the original coastline, the escarpment of the North Kent Downs that runs across there. So this is an area that has got a, a long and resilient history of people, wildlife and landscape interacting together. The main attractions in the marsh are the churches, most of which have outlived their congregations. The most singularly beautiful, St Thomas a Becket in Fairfield. You find it on the lane that leads south from Appledore, or rather off the lane, floating serenely in a field that turns out to be an island. How many times have you been to a church where the instruction is, pick up the key from the farmhouse along the lane? 
Let's see if it's going to work and let me into the spiritual heart of Romney Marsh. The origins of the church are medieval and the exterior is 18th century, but the interior is like no other church I have ever seen. Instead of everyone facing the front, families would sit in these box pews looking at each other. Mind you, the preacher could keep an eye on everyone from the only triple-decker pulpit in Kent. <laughs> Romney Marsh, the final frontier. It might not look like a great military fortification, but in fact the Royal Military Canal is. It was dug to amputate the marsh from the rest of Britain as the last line of defence against Napoleonic expansionism. The longer you spend in Romney Marsh, the greater the sense of otherworldliness to reconnect with the rest of Kent and to find somewhere fresh to spend the night. Just follow the line of the Royal Military Canal here to the Port Lim Mansion Hotel. Stylish, romantic, attractive. No, not me, the Sir Philip Sassoon Bridal Suite named after the man who created the house. Winston Churchill, Lawrence of Arabia, Edward and Mrs. Simpson. They've all stayed here, but not in the same room on the same night. The mansion house is located within Port Lim Reserve, where there are other accommodation options, such as Elephant Lodge, it's just like the Serengeti in Tanzania, only the wildlife's just a little bit different. Hello. <laughs> if you prefer indigenous cuisine, then let me recommend the Checkers, a pub in the beautiful village of Luz, spelt loose, but pronounced to rhyme with muse. Ah, the landlord, sure gets all the food and drink he can from within the county of Kent. I'm drinking Rocking Robin, which is brewed about a mile away. And all the meat is from local butchers too. By the way, my fellow drinkers are men of Kent because we're east of the River Medway. Those from west of the river are Kentish men. And these are Lou's women. So you've dug the Channel Tunnel. What do you do with all the spoil? Create Samphire Ho, reclaimed land beneath the White Cliffs of Dover, owned by Eurotunnel, which runs shuttles from Folkestone along the coast to Calais, just over there. And for an even better view of France, I'm heading up there. This is a place of superlatives. I'm at the closest point in Britain to continental Europe, just 23 miles away across the English Channel, which itself is one of the busiest sea lanes in the world. And I reckon you're looking at perhaps one of the finest views in England. A large slab of the White Cliffs of Dover is owned by the National Trust, which organises everything to make it as accessible as possible. The general manager, Virginia Portman, says she's constantly inspired by the cliffs. To me, um, they're a symbol of Britain, really. I think particularly in these days where we're commemorating the anniversaries of the wars. You know, there are a lot of people that come here that have memories from their childhood. I don't think it's, it's exaggerated to say that they're a, a symbol of hope for a lot of people. You can take some well thought out walks, of which my favourite follows the coast around to another National Trust landmark. And if you've still got some energy left after the two mile walk to the South Foreland Lighthouse, you can climb 76 steps to the top, where you are 345 feet above the English Channel. Yet more spectacular views and another superlative. 
In winter, this is the place in Britain that first sees the sunrise. And here is your reward. The cottage at the foot of the lighthouse has been turned into Mrs. Knott's tea room in honour of the lady whose family ran the lighthouse for many years. What I love about it is the way that it's been recreated with the help of everybody's old china and all kinds of mementos of pre-war life. I began my trip through Kent at a castle and I've ended it here at Dover Castle. A magnificent compendium of fortifications with added surprises such as this extraordinary Roman lighthouse built around 120 AD. From here it used to be a week's march to London. Today you can get there in just 66 minutes thanks to Britain's fastest railway. Or you could get on your bike because this is the start of Britain's longest bicycle trail. Route 1 from here to the top of Scotland. So you can meander back through Kent and maybe even get across to Essex. Let's see if it's going to let me in to the spiritual heart of... <laughs> to the top where you are 345 feet above the English Channel. <laughs> Sorry. I do apologise, the, the, um, I tripped over something which is quite funny, I'll probably put in the, in the outtakes. 